Time for me to get schooled in suspension system springs. Luckily, I've got Riley here, one uh, member of our sub-assembly team. I also have Galen here, one of our fabricators here at Local Motors. Okay, first off guys, what is a suspension system? All right, so there's vehicles, every type of vehicle has a suspension system obviously, okay? There's none of, no cars are rigid, you know, because they wouldn't be any fun to drive. You just get bounced around everywhere. So we have suspension systems that basically hold the car up, they hold the wheels on, and they uh, make your ride comfortable. Okay, so and uh, each suspension system has a spring and a damper, something to keep the spring controlled. So we're gonna, basically, Galen, what's a spring exactly? A uh, spring is a device that, like you are saying, um, suspends the vehicle and uh, gives the suspension, you know, a movable feel to it. Um, and here we have the, the different kinds of springs. Um, so we have three different types of springs here? Yeah, three okay. different types. Uh, and that's what we're gonna focus on is explaining like why there are different types of springs and why they're important. Okay. So we have three examples here. There are a few others that uh, we don't have examples of, but these are some of the most common types of springs. So we're going to start with uh, probably the, one of the older types and the uh, most, uh, we call, around here we call it the dinosaur. I call okay, them covered so, wagon springs. Or covered <laughs> wagon springs. So we have a leaf spring here. Okay, and most commonly these are on, like, say, the back of a pickup truck. Okay, it's really heavy, it's really big. Okay. It does not look like a spring. <laughs> <laughs> right, it doesn't they do look, look like, like leaves, though. <laughs> right. <laughs> so basically, uh, what these are good for is uh, like hauling heavy loads. Okay, they're very rough. They're not very progressive. Okay, they're uh, they're basically there to hold a lot of weight. What's an example of a vehicle you find this type of spring on? So like any Ford truck, any Chevy truck, like any basically big truck. So they uh, all have leaf springs on the back of them. Okay. Sometimes on the front, if they have a, a solid axle on the front, you usually find uh, leaf like this on the front. Okay, and what's the next type of spring? All right, so after our covered wagon springs, we have a torsion bar. Okay, so this is obviously not exactly a torsion bar. This is actually a sway bar for our rally fighter, but it is the same concept. Okay. okay, a lot of times we'll have a square end on one side instead of two splines. Okay, but basically you'd find this on like the front of a half ton truck or something. These aren't really used a whole lot uh, other than that. Okay, because they are, it's basically you're twisting a bar. So in that, that creates torsion, well, that's why it's called a torsion bar. And then so as you're moving, as you go up and down, this actually twists side to side. Okay, and acts like a spring. Exactly. Got it. So yeah. that's more of like a bigger type of vehicle. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And all a spring really is is just a device that um, when force is applied on, it wants to return back to its original shape. So you can apply force, it'll store it, and wants to um, put that force back out. Okay, and what is this spring here? This looks more like what I would think of yeah. when I think of a vehicle Yeah, spring. this is something you'd see on a passenger car, even, you know, maybe on the front of a Toyota truck, something like that. Um, it's a coil spring just like a coil over, um, but if you look, it actually has a slight taper on the bottom here, and a lot of times that's either just to make it so it can sit on the strut easier, or sometimes these will, these will even have a, a progressive rate built into them. And that's when you'll see either the coil itself gets thicker, these coils get thicker, uh -huh. or they're closer together, and that's how you tell if it has some sort of a progressive rate. Uh, progressive rate is just a part of the spring that when those coils are active, it actually takes more or less force to compress them a certain amount. That's how we measure springs in uh, basically what it, foot pounds, not how many, uh, or inch pounds, um, how many pounds it takes to compress a spring an inch. Here at Local Motors, we're known for building the Rally Fighter, which is an off-road street legal car. So talk to me about which one of these springs goes on the Rally Fighter and a little bit more detail about that type of suspension system. All right, so uh, you can obviously see our three types of springs here that we've been talking about that are more passenger car oriented. Okay, and then you look over here, and we have our fancy rally fighter stuff, all right? <laughs> so, obviously, doesn't that look a lot cooler than these three? Well, I was thinking that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so basically, our springs on our car are all 
coil over oriented. Okay, so it's basically a shock with a coil or our spring over mm -hmm. top of it. Okay, and the reason that they're over top is because they're easily controllable. So, and we actually already talked about that with you in our last video yep. about coil overs. Yeah, okay. so we'll provide a link for everyone watching to that video. Mm -hmm. This is an example of a coil spring that's off of our coil over. Okay, so there's a, a, there's a few numbers that correlate with them. What does this so, 400 mean? So there is a 400 on there. I don't know if you guys can see that. But okay, so that is your actual inch pounds that it takes you to compress that. So you, you think you can put out 400 inch pounds well, okay? Well, yeah. Went to the gym this morning, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so All right. not a dent. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's obviously, that's kind of a representation of like how these hold the weight of a vehicle. Okay, they're not easy to compress, okay? They're, this is basically a bar of metal coiled up. Okay, so they're not easy to push. Uh, next we'll move on to go back to kind of the leaf spring. What's, what's cool about a leaf spring and why it's so widely used on a vehicle mm -hmm. is this is basically, this is almost the whole suspension system. Your axle would mount under here and these bolt right to your, right to your vehicle. So not only does it suspend the vehicle, but it holds the, the parts onto the vehicle. So okay. this, this is like the whole package. Much different from the most Yeah, because something, something like this, you would have control arms, same with the torsion bar or a coilover setup. You need some sort of links, control arms, other parts that support the wheel and, and all the moving parts. Um, this is very simple, and that's partly why it's so rugged. Exactly, and it's, that's also why it's so popular, is it's super easy. Yeah. Okay, everything's right. square. There's no angles you have to figure out, really. I mean, yeah. you just basically two brackets, two bolts, and you're done. The problem with the leaf spring is inefficient. You can see there's all these different leaves here and they're all clamped together. When this flexes, these leaves have to actually move on each other just because these dimensions are slightly changing. That's why you see these clips. Yep. These springs actually rub on each other and here you can see the marks where this clip has moved all the way over while this, while this spring pack is compressed. And so you have a lot of friction with the leaf spring. Also, when your pivot's right here, you have a bolt going through it. When this has to pivot, that's another that's another part where there's friction. So there's going to be friction in, the, in these bushings right here. So why use this type of spring versus this type of spring on a rally fighter? Well, when you have a suspension system with a lot of friction in it, it's not very efficient. So when you're going over bumps and you're wanting to uh, have tunability to dictate how your suspension functions and moves over bumps, you don't want friction because that's like a kind of an unaccounted for force that um, can mess with your tuning. It also causes heat. Um, that's you know not good when you're dealing with a vehicle that is you know performance oriented. Right. So the rally fighter can go off road and on road, yeah. but the suspension is kind of tailored yes. towards the off road. Yes. And when when you have suspension that's moving over uh, bumps very rapidly, that can create a lot of heat in the shock. And if it had a spring system like this, um, this spring would be getting abused and couldn't take it. So basically, just to reiterate everything that we've talked about, the reason that we use coilovers on the Rally Fighter is it's they're basically the best way to tune our suspension to be able to go over the desert the smoothest way possible. I learned a ton about springs. I had no idea there was even so many different types of springs. So thank you guys so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us for this webisode of Local Motors Live. Stay tuned tomorrow for plenty more stories from around the Menker factory. Be sure to subscribe to our Local Motors YouTube channel. Until then, you can follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook.